Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84, and today we're going to be taking a look at these SanDisk portable SSDs. They're pretty convenient and portable, however, they don't quite match up to the advertised speed on the box. So today we're going to be looking at a simple trick to try and get more performance out of these SSDs. So we have here a SanDisk portable SSD. This one is the one terabyte model. It's not the pro version, which is advertised at a faster speed, but this is just the standard extreme model. And this has a speed of 1050 megabytes per second advertised as read and 1000 megabytes per second advertised as write. And unfortunately, you don't get those advertised speeds even on a brand new Mac Studio. So what's the deal here? To make these SSDs as quick as possible, SanDisk is using the USB 3.2 specification. Now, if that sounds similar to USB 3.1 and you're thinking, hey, does my machine have 3.2? Probably not. And that's the problem. These disks are so quick and the interface is so fast that unfortunately most machines out there cannot actually reach the speeds advertised on the box. Even my Mac Studio here, which came out in early 2022, only has USB 3.1 USB-C ports and some Thunderbolt 4 ports. However, there is a trick that we could do to make this perform a bit closer to its specifications. Now I'm fairly new to USB-C, so take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt, but it is a little confusing because you have USB 3 and then you have Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, and they all share a similar USB-C style connector. And then you have USB 4. Apparently my Mac's Thunderbolt 4 ports double as USB 4 ports as well. These seem to be a whole lot faster than even USB 3.2 ports, with a maximum speed of 40 gigabits per second. On the other hand, my two front USB ports are only USB 3.1 generation 2. But even with their 10 gigabit per second or 1250 megabytes per second theoretical max speed, when connected to those, the SanDisk SSD doesn't come close to its advertised speed. So I'm guessing that there's some weird USB handshake or miscommunication issue. Now while looking around online, I did find a lot of posts asking the same question I was. Why wasn't this SSD as quick as it was advertised? But one comment stood out to me. They said that if I took a Thunderbolt 4 cable and plugged that into a Thunderbolt 4 port on my Mac and then plugged it into this SSD, I should get faster speed performance out of this than the included USB-C cable. So I bought two different Thunderbolt 4 cables to see if this would make any difference in our speed comparisons. The first cable here is from Cable Matters. This is a company that I know and I've had a few adapters from them and I've never had any issues. And the second cable is some bargain bin, well, cable. Both cables are advertised as Thunderbolt 4. I know from reviews this one should pass the speed test, but we'll come back to this cable later on to see if it's a good alternative cheap option. But first we'll test these SSDs with the included USB-C cable and the Thunderbolt 4 cable to see which gives you better performance. I'll be using my Mac Studio, which has an M1 Pro chip inside, which has four Thunderbolt 4 ports in the back and two USB-C ports on the front and we'll test both the one terabyte drive and the four terabyte drive to see what speed differences we get. So first off, let's take this SanDisk one terabyte model and I'm going to use the included USB-C cable and I'm going to plug it into the front port of the Mac Studio. So now I'm going to start a speed test. I'm going to be using the two gigabyte stress here and let's select the hard disk here and I'm going to select the SanDisk one terabyte this is over the USB connection, and I'm gonna hit start, and we'll let it go for a few rounds. Okay, so after three tests, it looks like the write speed was about 780, and the read speed was about 677. Not bad speeds at all, a heck of a lot faster than the spinning drive, but not close enough to the advertised speed to make me 100% happy. So let's eject and disconnect this disk from the USB cable, and let's try it when plugged into that Thunderbolt 4 cable. Once again, I'm going to use the two gigabyte stress size and I'm going to select that drive and we'll start a test. And we'll let it go for three cycles. Now the results look kind of similar. However, you did see that the write speeds were peaking up past 900 megabytes per second and the read speeds were a bit quicker at over 800 megabytes per second. So plugging in the SSD into the Thunderbolt 4 port did give us a healthy speed improvement. I'm going to guess it's using the USB 4 mode of the Thunderbolt 4 port to achieve that. Let's try the same test with the 4TB model. 
Again, we're gonna plug in the four terabyte model in the front of the USB ports using the included cable that came with the SanDisk drive. And now I'm going to select that four terabyte drive and we'll click start and let it go for three cycles. So it seems that this write and read speed are a bit lower than the one terabyte model. We have about 620 write speed. And although it did go a bit higher before, the read speed is about in the 400 to 500 range. So let's unplug this from the USB-C cable and plug it into the Thunderbolt 4 cable. All right, now let's click start and see how it performs. Again, using the Thunderbolt 4 port, we did see a significant speed improvement over the read and write functions. Here's a graph of how the one terabyte and four terabyte SSDs performed via the USB 3.1 generation two and Thunderbolt four ports on my Mac studio. I'm sure these speeds would fluctuate a bit depending on a number of factors, but it does show you that by plugging the SSD into a Thunderbolt four port, you will get closer to the advertised speed of the SSD. Now let's talk about the Thunderbolt four cables I purchased. This cheapo $10 no-name Thunderbolt cable seemed to perform just as fast as the $29 Cables Matters Thunderbolt cable. I'll put links to those cables in the video description in case you're interested in trying them out. But I still had one question. Was the cable included with the SSD to blame for the slower speeds? I wondered what would happen if I plugged SanDisk's included cable into my Thunderbolt 4 port. Would I get a speed improvement without having to buy a dedicated Thunderbolt 4 cable? Using SanDisk's included cable plugged into the Thunderbolt 4 port, we do see a speed boost compared to using that same cable with the USB-C port on the front of my Mac. However, using the Cable Matters Thunderbolt 4 cable, we do see even faster speeds than when using the cable from SanDisk. So there you have it. By spending a few extra dollars on a Thunderbolt 4 cable, you can get a realistic speed improvement on these little SSDs. However, I do think it's kind of shady for them putting that speed rating on the box and not saying, hey, you need to purchase a better cable or your system needs to have this specific port in order to get those speeds. They kind of dance around that in the back, but that's not a great user experience. They should clearly define what port or cable you need on your system to get those advertised speeds. They shouldn't leave it to the user to figure that out or have them guess to use a Thunderbolt 4 port if they have one especially considering as of February 2023, USB-C 3.2 Generation 2 ports aren't present on many systems. Now, although the built-in SSD on the Mac Studio is over five times faster than these SSDs, they still work great for my meager Final Cut Pro projects, even if the USB handshake between the SSD and my Mac isn't 100% perfect. So I hope this video showed you about how to get a bit more of a speed boost from these SanDisk SSDs. Hopefully it had helped you out. If you like these sorts of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving a thumbs up. You could also follow me on social media and support me on Patreon. But that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you right here next time on Mac 84.